Hi guys, and welcome back. Now that you understand how to install Visual Studio Code, as well as the PowerShell and Docker extensions for VS Code, let's go ahead and take a look and explore the VS Code interface, specifically as it pertains to the PowerShell language. All right, so here we are back in VS Code, and I'll be working under the 03 directory here, explore the VS Code PowerShell extension. And the first thing that I wanted to draw your attention to is the language mode inside of VS Code. Now on the bottom right hand side of the screen, you can see down here in the bottom corner, there is a little language mode indicator on the status bar. And right now it just says markdown. And that's because we have a file open with the .md extension, which is kind of a de facto standard for markdown files. Now in this same 03 directory here, I've got another file called test.ps1. And if I click on that file, you'll notice that the language mode in Visual Studio Code actually switches over correctly to PowerShell. Now, how did VS Code know that this was a PowerShell file? Well, it's looking at the file extension here. So we, because we have a PS1 file, or perhaps if you're creating a module, you might have a PSM1 file and it knows based on that file extension which language mode to switch over to. So as you're navigating around your project and opening up different files, you'll just see that indicator change down at the bottom there. Now, the language mode in Visual Studio Code affects a few different things, and one of those things is going to be the syntax highlighting. So in this markdown file that I have open here, you can see that this H2 heading here, because I have two pound signs, is being highlighted as a special entity. So it recognizes that that header is a unique entity. Also, you'll see that I have a double star around this down here, which makes it a bold face. And so if I hit Control Shift V to just render out that markdown file, you can see that that command explorer text, sure enough, is bold. And up here we have that H2. Now in the PowerShell side of things, you can see that we also get the syntax highlighting here for different PowerShell commands. Now, depending on what kind of screen you're viewing on, this might look kind of subtle. However, if I were to change the theme that I have applied in my editor here, it'll make it a little bit more pronounced. So now that I've changed the theme, you can actually see a little bit more clearly that the start sleep PowerShell command or that function is being highlighted as well as the dash indicating that we have a named parameter, as well as an actual integer value that we're passing in as a parameter value to the seconds parameter here. So when you're working in the correct language mode, it gives you that nice syntax highlighting as you are typing. Now, one other really cool feature that is one of the main reasons I personally love PowerShell so much is that in PowerShell, you have something called IntelliSense or tab completion in some other languages. Now, when you start typing in PowerShell, like get-pro, if, if the IntelliSense engine doesn't invoke, you can actually just hit control space to go ahead and invoke it. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to load a list of all the different commands that are inside of your PowerShell environment, and eventually it will auto-complete that for you. Now, as you can see here, it's not loading, and the PowerShell extension for VS Code does have kind of a reputation for getting a little bit hung up. And so one of the things I wanted to mention to you is that if that ever happens to you, you can go ahead and just hit F1 or Control-Shift-P to invoke the Visual Studio Code command palette. And if you just search for PowerShell here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of PowerShell-specific commands in Visual Studio Code that are provided by the PowerShell extension. So if you don't have the PowerShell extension for VS Code installed, you won't have these commands available and you won't have certain features like IntelliSense available either. But what you can do is just run PowerShell and then restart current session. So if you just search for like PowRE, for example, you can come up with this PowerShell restart current session and once you hit enter, that'll basically just restart this PowerShell integrated terminal down here in the terminal window. And it should kind of give the extension a little bit of a kick in the pants, so to speak. And if I hit control space now to invoke that IntelliSense engine, you can see that sure enough, it is giving me some results. Now, as I continue to type here, you'll see that it's not only auto-completing the command name, but it's also auto-completing for me and showing me kind of the built-in documentation 
for all of the parameters that are available for all of the different parameter sets on this particular PowerShell command. And if I just use the arrow key to kind of navigate between the results here, it's going to go ahead and update that documentation accordingly. Now, if I hit tab to autocomplete that and then type a dash to add a parameter to this command, you can actually see that it's using the PowerShell type system to inspect these commands and show me a list of all the supported parameters that are on this particular command. So if I autocomplete name by hitting enter, I can go ahead and just start uh, hitting control space here again. And you'll actually see that some commands, not all commands, but in this case, the get process command has auto completion for the name parameter and you can actually see that it's getting back a list of all the processes on my system so it can actually auto complete that parameter value now if you're interested in building that type of auto completion or intellisense capability for your own powershell functions and modules i actually have another skill that specifically talks about intellisense at cbt nuggets for powershell now, one other great convenience feature in the PowerShell extension is the ability to invoke the debugger very easily. Now, if you're accustomed to working with the PowerShell Integrated Scripting Editor, or ISE, then you're probably accustomed to the F5 key to invoke a PowerShell script. And sure enough, if I just hit F5 here, you'll see that it kicks off my PowerShell script inside of this PowerShell Integrated Console down here and runs the code that it contains. Now, it's not actually returning anything because all we're doing is sleeping here. But another really useful feature that I personally take a lot of advantage of is the F8 key. So if I'm writing a really long script where I've got, you know, lots of different commands, maybe I've got dash path C slash temp, sometimes I'll just want to run one particular command without running the other commands that are in a particular script. So maybe I want to skip over the start sleep function and just run get child item. So normally I might have to maybe put that into a separate file or wrap them inside of functions and then call one of those functions. But in the PowerShell extension, you can actually just hit the F8 key and that will invoke the current line where your cursor is on. Also, if you want to run multiple lines, let's say I wanted to run lines one and three, one, two, and three, I could select all that text there, hit F8, and it will go ahead and run all of the selected text. So if there's a, just a small portion of your script that you want to test out and check what the result is before actually executing the entire thing, you can go ahead and do that with the F8 key. Now that you've understood some of the essentials about the PowerShell extension, let's talk about the configuration of the PowerShell extension and some of the different options that you have available to you. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.